Joker, the Geth blast shield is open. Ready to take out this base? Roger that. Normandy's weapon systems are ready to sink to your target. I recommend you withdraw to a safe distance. Backup is inbound. That was an example of kind of some of the epic stuff that we're trying to show off for uh, in Mass Effect 3. You know, the, the real like intensity and the scale of, of what's going on. Um, so now we're going to show um, a little bit of combat and kind of some other choice elements um, and how we're in implementing choice in combat. We're going to go over to the Solarian homeworld, Sarkesh, uh, where you're going to be rescuing a... Um, uh, a person who is of vital importance to uh, getting two warring races to ally. Are you okay? Containment shield is holding. Can't speak for Krogan's health, however. I'm fine, Commander. Females kept secret, possibly a mole in STG, could be indoctrinated. If no Krogan alliance with Turians, Reapers left unchallenged. We'll do more than challenge them. Shepard, meet us at next checkpoint. Cerberus likely to target. Ah!
So, as you guys saw there, right there was the Omni Blade. Uh, it's you know one of the uh, one of the improvements that we've made to combat. In that, you know, we want to make sure that when you get up close and personal, if you're able to get up close and personal, you're you know you're going to have an ability that can you know give guys the good one shot. And I mean, the Omni Blade from a uh, IP perspective is basically a holographic switchblade. I mean, that thing comes out of comes out of your Omni Tool, and you're able to give the guy what for. Uh, now that said, um, you know, while you saw a lot of run and gun stuff there, we run and really focus too the, on the, ta the tactical a aspects of gameplay. So the pause and play aspects are still there. We're going to bring up the weapon wheel. We're going to switch over to the uh, machine pistol. And before we keep going here, so. They're indoctrinating. They're capable so, of anything. So at this point, we're going to bring up the power wheel. And we're going to give some squad commands just to move Garrison Liara around. We're also going to equip incendiary ammo. It's uh, an ammo type that lets you light guys on fire. And as we kind of move up into the next area, I want to talk a little about AI. So some of the big AI improvements that you'll see now are, are just you know really increasing the the intensity of the AI, giving them the ability to control the battlefield a lot more. We've given them things like uh, SWAT shields and the ability to, you know, use rocket boots to jump and land on, on different areas. They're going to be controlling the battlefield a lot more. You're going to have to be, you know, changing your play style in order to change to the now reactive battlefield. So in this particular thing, you're going to see how we're almost forced into uh, doing a flanking action. So as you can see, combat's also gotten a whole lot harder. Um, so you saw there that we had to use a flanking action. We saw some squad power usage. Uh, we all, you also saw the uh, grenade, the frag grenade. So it's one of the new weapons that we're bringing into the Mass Effect 3. Uh, you know, it allows you to kind of just use some ballistics to actually, um, you know, arc around things, bounce off targets and whatnot. One of the other big pieces of feedback that we've gotten from the fans is that They've really wanted to see a lot more weapon customization and customization in general. So what you, where we're at right now is on a weapon bench. You're going to find these throughout the world. It allows you to basically toss your weapon down on the bench and make very physical changes to not only the stats of the weapon, how, but how they look and how they actually react. So each, each weapon mod will literally change the way that you want to play with that weapon. Continuing in that kind of vein, we also made a lot of, cha we made a lot of changes to how squad uh, how this squad uh, customization works. So in this particular case, we're gonna look at squad mastery. So not only are you adding uh, points like you have in previous Mass Effect games, now you're actually gonna be able to really customize each of those uh, abilities. So in the case of combat mastery, we're gonna be, uh, you can choose whether or not you wanna do more damage with your weapons or whether or not you want your actual, um, the choices you're making in conversation to have a greater effect on your Paragon or Renegade uh, status. Um, so each of these uh, choices that you make will have a very um, noticeable and very, and oftentimes very visual effect and very gameplay oriented effect on, on what's going on. Scanning. How are you holding up? Containment shield strong, but not designed for direct fire. This isn't your problem, Commander. You don't know me. But I'd like to. Hang in there. How many more checkpoints? Just landing area. Hope Erdnot Rex is still waiting. Rex can't keep his hands off a fertile female. He'll be there. I'll see you up top. Enemies up ahead. Yep. So... Now that we've made a lot of changes to just how kind of movement in general happens, 
it's, it's really allowing us to do things like stealth gameplay a lot more. So what you're going to see here is Reed's going to be moving through cover, going to be doing uh, SWAT turns and combat rolls to be, be able to actually get in right behind the guy and do an Omni Blade kill. Let's get the hell out of here. So, exploration is going to be a whole new element of, of Mass Effect. I mean, you're going to be able to jump over pits, you're going to be able to climb up ladders, you're going to be using just the environment a whole lot more than you have seen in other Mass Effect games. It's going to be a much bigger experience. Finally, the run and gun gameplay is somewhere where we put a lot of effort, and I'm just going to give you a good example of that here. So as you saw, I mean, again, combat is a lot more difficult. Um, now that run and gun gameplay can really be uh, enhanced through the use of weapon mods and power modifications. So the more that you, you know, the more that you figure out what the playstyle that you want to play with, the more that you're able to change the the equipment that you find and purchase and through the economy, and you're going to be uh, and you're going to be able to use that stuff to make your gameplay, make the game more suited to your choice in gameplay rather. Shepard, you must authorize release. Pod then transfers to loading area. Let's get you out of there. What you saw there was the Cerberus uh, uh, Atlas, and that's basically a, a giant mech that, you know, if you're able to actually get the guy out of the the, uh, the pilot seat, you're going to be able to take over that mech and use it uh, as a vehicle of your own. Now we've been showing levels themselves, but really Mass Effect is about exploration, and it's about your choice in that exploration. So you're going to still be have access to the Normandy. You're going to be going to new places. You're going to be taking hold of key assets. Uh, you're going to be uh, saving civilizations, you're going to be um, seeing whole new places that we've never shown before, exploring new technologies, you're going to be working together with your teammates to secure alliances, all within the context of uh, the most impressive and advanced uh, conversation system and digital acting that we've ever done at Bioware, all within the context of the global galaxy at war. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit here. I'm going to go to a very early point in the game. Commander Shepard has been uh, being held on Earth for trial. Now, while that trial is going on, though, uh, the Reapers actually arrive. 